five. Turn the volume down a little bit. What's up, family? How y'all doing? It's Pastor Lee B. What's up, fam? This is Pastor Trey, Straight Church. No chaser. Where we keep things real, relevant, and righteous. <laughs> hey, y'all. I see y'all coming in. There's a few of y'all in here. We're on 96.5 page today. It's my prayer that you can share this to your page. Click the share button and give us some hearts. Give us some hearts. Give us some hearts. Put some hearts, some hearts on the screen. Like and subscribe. What are we looking at? Okay, I see comments coming in. We're about to get started, family. We're about to get started. Good afternoon to you, Sister Erica LaShawn Thompson. How you doing? Sister Mother, Sonia McCall. Good evening. Good afternoon to you. It's my prayer that y'all can share this broadcast on your personal page so that someone can see it. We're running over now so that we can share it as well because I think there's some more people who want in on this discussion. Y'all tell me in the chat. We're about to go on live on 96.5 in a few seconds. But have you seen the movie yet? Uh Uh-oh. I want to know, have you seen the movie? I hope it's not freezing too much, though, because of that rain. Y'all, please bear with us. Please bear with us. Sister Kaya Knight says she saw the movie. It's going to be on. Let's go. Montgomery's Inspiration Station, Praise 96.5 FM, WMGY. We're now six minutes past the three o'clock hour. It's 3.06 here in the capital city. <laughs> and it's now time for Straight Church. No chaser. With yours truly, the Crown Prince, Pastor Trey. Ye and Pastor Lee B. <laughs> Where we keep things real, relevant, and righteous. You already know. So, bro, before we dive Uh-oh. into the conversation, man, how are you feeling today, man? How you feeling? Hey, man, it's raining outside, but you know I'm Baptist. I like water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holy water, huh? <laughs> I like all the water. <laughs> <laughs> Take me to the water. Water is, water is good for you, though. Hey, it's good for you, dog. It chill your body, but not your soul. Yeah, it'll you know, bathe you to wash you. Oh, was well, so you talking about clean? that? I'm, I'm talking about water just in general. Like, yeah, water's good. It's too low. I think. We made up a, of a lot of water, right? We got to drink more water and stop putting Kool-Aid and sugar in our water. Amen. But as good and as beneficial as water is for us, a lot of people don't like water, though. What's wrong with us? I don't know. We scared of it, ain't it? Mm. See, that mean they don't go swimming in their bad water like I used to. <laughs> I used to bring my goggles in and my mama had to come get me out there splashing water everywhere. <laughs> So, bro, are you ready to dive into the conversation, man? Man, I think this is going to be a good conversation. I'm excited, uh, but I think we got to give them a disclaimer. 
there might be a few spoil alerts, okay? Yeah. We want to go ahead and tell you, we're going to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, because there was a, a movie that was recently released called Hunt for Jesus, uh -uh. Save Your Soul. Man, what's what, what about that movie? And, bro, when I tell you, <laughs> so many people have so many things to say about this movie. Yeah. Uh, hmm. <sighs> I mean, the reviews have been both good and bad, right? Both right. positive and negative, right? Uh, and so, what we're gonna do for those of you who haven't seen the movie or may not have even heard the movie, we're gonna play a trailer of the movie, okay? And then we're gonna dive right into some of the content of the movie. Now, we're gonna do the best that we can not to. Uh, we're gonna tell all of it. Yeah, we're gonna try our best not to. But we want to shape your perspective yeah. for when you go and watch it. And there are some important things that we definitely need to share with you concerning this movie. So again, this is the official trailer for Hunt for Jesus. Hunt for Jesus. Save mm -mm. your soul. I just want to clarify some things before we can y'all hear? Before we get started. Every woman is not Say built for the great no responsibility <laughs> of being a savior. Pastor Lee Christ Child faces allegations of misconduct. His megachurch may okay. never be the same. Lee Curtis and I, we're going to get to the other side. Lee yeah. Curtis. Yeah, with the uh, big old microphone. Come in closer, son. You're going to see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> What's up? I'm Rocky up in this fight. Rocky didn't win. But he You've did win Rocky, too. Oh, baby, how many times did you get past the first movie? That was all set up. He is just so wrong. He needs to be personal. Hey, it out. I'm going to bless your heart. Hey, I'm going to show you plenty of the old congregation. Y'all haven't seen it yet. I want y'all to go see it. You don't have to go to the movie theater. You can also watch it on Peacock at home. You can watch it on Peacock. And you have a blessed... I'm a set up, but I'm no criminal. We need you back in that pulpit so you can get me back on that stage. Yeah. You ain't really hear that many things, baby. Shake it for the Lord. Shake it for the Lord. I said, shake it for the Lord. <laughs> All those folks out there who are going to see this, I want you to know that I did what I was supposed to do. I just don't see how that's possible. All, all things are possible with God. That's, oh. that's Matthew 19, 26. Yes, it is. So good. Montgomery's Inspiration Station, Praise <laughs> 96.5 FM, WMGY. That was the official trailer for the new movie, Hunk for Jesus. He'll save your soul. Save your soul. My God. <laughs> this is good. And uh, this movie has stirred up a lot of the saints. A lot of the saints are stirred up. They stirred up that. Some are. Some like the movie, and some just strongly dislike the movie a strong dislike for a lot of them so i want you to share something that many people may not know about the movie this movie is actually a it's a it's a satire film uh so a satire film is a television and film um that's in the genre of being fictional or at least pseudo fictional that they touch on some things and they make it funny or even if it's controversial they want to deal with it and give us a different perspective uh, so this this genre of film, you know, is something just like other movies we've seen coming up, like Scream and mm -hmm. things of that nature, that literally makes fun of something that could be real, <laughs> uh, but definitely a perspective that someone has. And Absolutely. I think I think I think this is why this is good conversation. Now I forgot. I know Sister Regina uh, Hill is in there, mm -hmm. and a brother by the name of, I believe, K. Sterling. Sterling K. Brown. Sterling K. Brown. Yeah. De Deacon, uh, well, excuse me, Sterling K. Brown. <laughs> and his name in the movie is Pastor Lee 
Curtis Child. Now his first day, name didn't have to be Lee. I'm just being Lee. Honest. Like they didn't have to do that. <laughs> his first name did not have to be Lee. But, Lee. but it's Lee Curtis Childs and First Lady Trinity Childs, right? Yep, that's it. I'm excited about this dialogue, and I want to see where you want to get started. But see, the interesting thing is that he pastors. Is it what is it? Greater what is it? Greater path. It's some like wondering to wonder path, wondering to something like that. Wondering See, greater path. Now you know. Church now you know like it's a juicy movie when we forget <laughs> the facts. <laughs> wonder to greater path Baptist Church. There you go. That's it. Wonder to greater. Path. And why did it have to be Baptist? I don't know. It's okay. All I right. Don't let's, <laughs> let's die. I don't know. Do you do you do you think the Lord is speaking to you, uh, Lee? Uh, 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 no, <laughs> no, my name is Lee B. Walker Jr. <laughs> Pastor Lee B. Not, not, not Lee Grant Childs and Grant, Childs Grant. What is it? Lee Curtis, okay. man. Lee ain't Curtis. No, nah, ain't no Lee and Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no Lee and Curtis, man. Shout out to our moms. We see y'all on the broadcast Absolutely. today. Got to send a very special shout out to my mom, Miss Angela B. Yeah, uh -huh. and my mother, Sister Annette. Uh, I love you, mother. So the interesting thing is that all of the churches pretty much referenced it in this movie were Baptist churches. Yeah. Now, well, let's well, let's tell people this now. We. Are talk about the movie but i want you to go and watch the movie as yeah, well tell them how they can watch it um you can watch it i think it's in a movie theater currently mm -hmm. and i think it's not even very expensive to go see right. i saw someone talking about three to five dollars mm -hmm. uh, but it's also on peacock if you have peacock on your tv you have the app peacock on your phone you can watch this movie what is it called once again the movie is called hunk for jesus <laughs> Save your soul. Save your soul. Now, and what also was interesting was that we found out late last night that this was a short film before it ever made uh, or was made into a longer film. Absolutely. Which brought a little more detail into the mix of mm -hmm. what was really going on. Right. Uh, but yeah, there's been some good reviews. There have been some negative reviews. And I think people who have the good reviews understand the, the culture or I guess the nature of that genre of films. Mm -hmm. I think people who have a negative review is namely or mainly going to be your church folk who are defending the church culture. But do you, that that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's it's not it's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> what what well let, let's go further. Why is it not necessarily a bad thing, Trey? Because I think it's I think as Christians immediately anytime something we see something hear something that goes against our beliefs our principles our doctrinal teachings our fundamental uh faith beliefs and understandings that righteous indignation just immediately rises up like it, it just yeah it's our, it it's our defense up. mechanism yeah. right and i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing for christians to be defensive mm -hmm. especially if you don't understand the genre of the movie or the purpose of the movie <laughs> because when the movie first comes on you know it's some things that can just rub you the wrong way true as a christian true true i, I mean initially the first thought <laughs> the first thought i had as a pastor was not something else to set us back <laughs> I mean, we trying so hard. You got yeah. preachers cutting off praise teams. Mm -hmm. You got preachers talking about Movado watches. You got <laughs> preachers getting getting uh, robbed in the middle of sermons. Bro, that's crazy. We don't need nothing else against us. Nothing else. But then I begin to look look, look a little closer. But then too, I think it's I think some Christians take it some Christians take it personally because of their connection and their affiliation and membership to a Baptist church. Wow. And so there's all, there's already a stereotype or a stereotypical label on Baptist churches. True. Anyways. True. And so anything else that kind of knocks on the Baptist denomination, you have those who are part of that denomination who feel like, dang, why y'all keep picking on us? True. True. And, and, and I like that from a denominational standpoint, I also mm -hmm. believe uh, bro, just simply that we legitimately don't like folks talking about the church. That's true. We don't care who it is. <laughs> I'm talking about it could be in a good way. We like, well, you don't go to church, you know, you know. So I think we naturally have that defense mechanism, as you said. And the Baptist part matters. I Absolutely. think even the potential parallel uh, parallelism with the actual story that we know, yeah, kind of scares some people, yeah. but. Uh, we want to get to it, but Trey, I think I don't know how much time we have now. How much time we so got? So we got about roughly maybe a little 
about three more minutes before we have to go to a commercial break. About three more minutes. So yeah. I know, I know online we got some people with us. I want to I want to drop this banner because I don't think we want to necessarily dive too deep into it right now, but I want to hear what some people's reviews might be. Absolutely. You Absolutely. know, so hit us up 334-398-8791. Again, that's 334-398-8791. Did you like it? Did, did you we, hate it? What'd you think about it? What you thought? <laughs> and don't go too far because we're gonna talk about this. Yeah, but but yeah. what did you think about this? The overall. Yeah, because I saw some Twitter posts. <laughs> I saw some folks saying Facebook they posts. Yeah, they were saying they deserved Oscars for it. Mm -hmm. Then there was others who was like, This is terrible. Mm -hmm. I wasted my money. Mm -hmm. You know, this was trash. But then some people saw some realism. True. And some things that the movie touched on that we as a church body and a church community that we are indeed not necessary. I like you. Well, when I talk a little softer, you know, and I don't talk too loud, I right. can get down in there. Right. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, 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 family. <laughs> yeah, man. But but what do y'all think? You know, <clears throat> it's it's definitely something that I think the church should see. Absolutely, I think so. I I I don't want to dive too far into it, but I do believe that this gives us the ability to see the perspective that the world has of us. Do you think, without getting too deep and without us okay. getting ahead of ourselves, do you think it's important for the church to have an understanding? world to them if they are the fish and we are the lure mm. it matters how they view us wow. you don't throw a catfish bait in to to to, to catch a bass <laughs> right you just don't do that if you want a catfish uh, then you throw in catfish base if you want a bait, rather. If you want a bass, then you're going to throw in bass bait. Right. You know, so I think sometimes we would act as if they need to just conform to us. Mm -hmm. We wait on them to come to us. But if we're going to do what Jesus did, we got to come to them. Um, and we got to put ourselves in a light that it is somewhat attractive to those who we're trying to bring in. Absolutely. And again, listen, if uh, you're listening to us and you have seen the movie Hunt for Jesus, Save Your Soul, we want to hear from you. We want to know, what are your reviews? What Hit us up right you? now. The number is 398-8791. Again, 398-8791. Somebody's calling in. Let's see. Let's see. Can we get them on the air? Call, are you? Yeah. I liked it, but I think it made some pastors look as if it was all about the money, pastors manipulating their congregations, some of them to have sex with them. Oh. And I'm not going to go any further, but I did belong to a church where that actually happened. The pastor was sleeping with males and females. Oh, God. Oh God. Well, and, and I think you're hitting on something well there, sister, um, that we really have to take notice of. Um, and and I do apologize for what you had to endure or mm -hmm. even be around, but definitely this movie touches on those subjects. A so they are things. real. Real, man. They are real. And I think we have to talk about it as a church. If we're gonna get better. <laughs> then we got to talk about what we're not doing right. And we definitely appreciate her perspective. Um, because we don't want to knock anybody's feelings. Absolutely. Um, because Ooh. we've all had to deal with some things. And we'll, we'll dive into that. Listen, we got about uh, 10 more seconds. So look. And now I want to give you this too. Uh, I see there's someone commenting on Facebook. Sister Angie says it was comical and often resembled a lot of the church culture that we now experience. And this is what we want to talk about. So listen, everybody, make sure you keep it locked. We're going to dive Ooh. right into it. Keep it locked. Locked. This is Straight Church. No chase. Sir. With Pastor Trey. And Pastor Levy. Right here exclusively on Montgomery's Inspiration Station. Praise 96.5 FM, WMGY. Yeet.
You're listening to the Crown Prince. Family. Get it. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Most of the CRM might get hot and heavy today. <laughs> it might get hot and heavy. Trey almost blew his cap off. No, 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 no. It's going to be an instant conversation, though. Drop in the comments and tell us what you think about the movie, though. For real, let us know. What do you think? There's 22 of you on here. If you haven't seen it, tell us you haven't seen it. If you watched it, tell us. And please make sure you share this live. We want to drive this communication. Share this live. Click the share button. Click it, click it, click it, click it, click it. Also, we want to notify you that you still have the opportunity to be a sponsor. Anybody who out here who has a business, you have something that you want to push, whether it be clothing, whether you're a small business entrepreneur, the opportunity for you to be a sponsor for this show, Straight Church, No Chaser. Whoever you can tell to look in, come in, hey, family, we want you to invite them so that they can hear what we're talking about. Sister Dean says she hadn't seen the movie. Sister Dice, you, you got to watch it tonight. I got to watch it tonight. Uh, <laughs> My wife said we'll watch it again tonight. I watched it two times last, but I'll watch it again just for you, okay? Uh, yeah. Oh, my. That, that's just so churchy. That. Every time it come on, you do the same thing every time it come on. I think that hits you in your, your sanctified soul. I was a young boy when they started singing that. that became, man, that was the song for everybody's home going service. Come on, y'all. Y'all know about a good old home going service. You're going to have pray while I'll be ready. going to get some chicken. Yeah. Some green beans. Some be good if you get and the checks used to be good. My favorite check drink still to this day is peach. The peach is good. Peach with some vanilla ice. Did you like the grape? Grape is cool, but grape kind of tastes like Robitus. And it has a nasty aftertaste. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Hey fam, how you doing? Where are you checking in at? Are you at work? Are you at home? Are you in the car? What are you doing? We want to know where you are. Yeah. Where are you at? What are you doing, family? Let us know. We want to know where our audience is listening from. And I know y'all probably in Montgomery, but if you're not at, look, <laughs> Naisha said, yeah, it do. It, it do taste like Robert to us. <laughs> yeah, it do. Uh, okay, Sister Dean's at work. Don't get in no trouble. We know you're a boss, but don't get in no trouble. Okay, you at work till four. All right. I invite I 85. Please, please be careful. At work. Okay, sis. I see you. At work. Definitely at work. At work. At work. Y'all got some good jobs. Uh oh. Sister Spivey says she thinks it treads a fine line between comedy and docudrama. They would definitely last, but it hit real close to home for those of us deeply submerged in the black. You're on it. You are dead on it. So what do you think about the people who, who would consider the music, the, the movie to be sacrilegious? You think that's too far? I think they're diving too deep. You think it's going too far? I think they're diving too deep. I think it's unfair for us to be so hypersensitive that we'll laugh at anybody else. But when mm. it comes to us, we can't laugh. You get what I mean? I, I think it's bad that we can talk about everybody else and every other culture and every other thing but when something shines a light and illuminates something concerning the church, we tuck our tails. Start touching on nerves. Yeah, we get to hollering what's against God. <laughs> yeah, we do it. We do it. Because anything to shut somebody up. Wow. If they're talking about us. And wow. we got to be real. If we can talk about them, we ought, to be able to, we ought to be able to tolerate them showing us our flaws. We're humans, so we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. So whatever we need to gain... You know, a better understanding, more wisdom, you know, tighten up what we've been allowing to become loose. And make changes. Yeah. Be willing to make changes, man. Yeah. Oh, see, Sister Donna's on it. <laughs> Hit dog. <dog. laughs> Trey got on the slow music. I can't shout like I want to. Would you hush, man? <laughs> we got we gotta play something for everybody. We gotta play something for everybody. <laughs> Your man wanna bounce and just turn hey. up. The whole time we I'm everybody trying. don't want to turn up. No, I gotta do this for Sister Spivey. She she ready to shout. I where my hoop trigger at? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. 
<laughs> Let go. <laughs> they too deep. <laughs> They too deep. They that's, too how, deep. that's how Lee Curtis was bucking in that <laughs> in that movie. Lee, Cur- <laughs> Lee Curtis do all the other stuff. Like most- look, look. <laughs> now you know the funniest part to me. <clears throat> One of the funniest parts. The other. Spoiler. Couple- what? Yeah, my fault. Spoiler. Other couple, man. When they're at the church and they just. Start. You remember? <laughs> it was like so. So you say straight church, no chase. I'm gonna be like the wife. Go okay, ahead. so straight church, no chaser. Straight church, no chaser. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh my god! If you have not seen the but movie, the slick way that they did it in bragging about the fact that they members left them oh, and yeah. came to their church. Oh yeah, and was like, yeah, we thank God. Oh, you know, we thank God. I mean, it was this bad. increase. It yeah, was bad that there was scandal. But our ministry has oh, been God. blowing up like it's crazy. You know the, like church folk? the wealth of the wicked <laughs> laid up. Come on now, we quit the holler. I'm talking about, <laughs> man, doc, You see a twenty dollar bill on the floor. You don't know who. Drop that 20. You hollering the wealth of the week. Or you see the 20 fall out the pocket. Or oh, man. And you stick your foot on the 20. But this is my blessing. And look around. <laughs> Trey folk crazy. And, and you, girls and slide you know, the 20 to themselves you know what? Because, and pick it up. Because I know we, we are resident theologians at our churches. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I know you are a budding apologist. I'm trying. There's there's an uh, um, apologetic statement that I shared on Facebook many years ago. Mm-hmm. That got me in some big trouble. Uh-oh. I simply said, if you sin to get it, then it's not a blessing. That's true. Oh, the church went up, right? That's true. That's true. They went up because we will sin, Doc, to get stuff. And holler, look how the Lord blessed me. You lying. You lying. God can't be righteous and wicked at the same Good time. God. I mean, <laughs> you lied on your yam paperwork. <laughs> Come on. You lied. On your kids, a lunchroom <laughs> of paperwork. You like, you know, you make money. Try for no, they be lying. Not somebody look how God is favor. Favor ain't fair, but it sure feel fair. No, honey boo boo child. No, honey boo boo child. You no. need to get that right. You lie. You, you need lie. to repent right now. Look, because someone can't get away with lying. Let me try to lie. I get caught every time. Every time. I just stop. I, every I'm time. Done. Ain't no need. Every time. Every <laughs> time. Try, every ain't time. trying no more, y'all. Every time. Every time. <laughs> I know there's a few of y'all on here just like me. When you try to you when you try to beat the system, you always get caught. I need the hearts to go up right there for the folks. Or that's like, like me. Or that's like me. Just don't even lie. Because Bad oh, you bad at bad lying? Ain't no need, yeah. right? You done gave it away. I started laughing, giggling. You laughing and winking. Yeah, giggling. <laughs> I, I can't even hold it. <laughs> I said, I don't even lie. Good God. It, it never works out. It just never works out. I don't, you ain't get away with nothing when you was a child. Look, look, look. You got to to say a little. A little uh, we, we couldn't say lie when we were kids. You had to learn how to say a little false tale. There you go. But I'm glad, though. <laughs> I'm thankful to God for my sister's shave. May she rest Easy. She used to cover for me. Oh, I can believe. She, she used to cover for me. I can believe. She knew I couldn't lie, uh-huh. so she would just fix it up for me. She fix it up for yeah, you. She'll already you? say this. What this? What all you got to say is this right here. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Sorry, dad. I know y'all watching. But she would say all you got to do is say this right here. Uh huh. It works. Ah, man, look, she keeping you out of trouble. <laughs> And she, she did probably, and she probably got thrashed. <laughs> she probably got the whoop of her took, life back. She, she took the so she took my place. She was my she was the propitiation. Oh for my, my sins. god, she was the <laughs> oh, the propitiation. Say it again. Matter of fact, spell it, Trey. No, no, sir. <laughs> propitiation. <laughs> Woo! Montgomery's Inspiration Station, first 96.5 FM, WMGY. Yeah. We're back with Straight Church. No chase, sir. This is yours truly, the Crown Prince, Pastor Trey. And Pastor Lee B. And this is our opportunity to keep things real, relevant, and righteous. Yeah. So, let's get back to Hunk for Jesus. Mm-mm. Save your soul. My God, today. <laughs> hey, you! if you have not watched it, you can jump to your Peacock app, watch it, 
for the freezy, or you can pay for that subscription as a monthly member and watch it on Peacock at home, or you can go to the movie theaters. Yeah, Trey, what you got to say, man? Man, so listen, do us a favor. Do not forget, please, man, sir, to go to your smartphone's app store and download the Praise 96.5 FM mobile app. So that way you can take us with you no matter where you go. Make sure you go and download the Praise 96.5 FM mobile app app let's get it and also if you're on facebook uh -huh. we need you to do us a favor go hey so make yep. sure you head over there on facebook so you can join in the conversation and i hear somebody train saying i don't have a facebook <laughs> If you don't have Facebook, run to YouTube. Put in Straight Church No Chaser. You can follow us on YouTube. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want you to join us in the conversation. So, let's to so, uh, both positive and negative concerning the movie Hunk for Jesus, Save Absolutely. Your Soul. And we're going to talk about some things that we saw. And so we want to go ahead and just put this, this, this disclaimer out there. Put it out there. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> my, my, my. Spoiler alert. We Spoiler just, alert. We, we may share some things, but whatever we do share is actually going to help you to watch the movie, maybe from a different perspective than what you probably would have. Right. Had you not listened to our conversation. Right. So, again, Lee, B, go ahead and tell them that this movie is a what now? It is a satire film. So, how to watch it tell you that there are positive and negative reviews i want you to learn this you've got to look at the fact that trey there's a lot of competition and comparison in this film yeah concerning ministry yeah and that's one of the overarching things that you see throughout the entirety of the movie is the competition and the comparison. This, you know, just pretty much throughout the whole movie. That's that's pretty much one of the things that you're going to see. And the interesting thing is that the way that you see some of the pastors uh, competing with each other right. is just starkly similar mm -hmm. to what I'm sure you and I may have experienced yeah. uh, in our time in many. Because competition is no respect of right, and the need to compare is no respect of person. And, and so, why do we deal with their downfall become someone else's increase? Absolutely. Um, and I think that's how it goes often, right? Like, their downfall is someone else's come up, right? That in order for them to have reached the success that they were able to amass. It had to take Pastor Childs's downfall. Yeah, his scandal yeah. caused them to have success. Wow. And and we know that God works in mysterious ways, Trey. But I think as we watch this film, we begin to understand that there was no innocence mm. in their excitement concerning their newfound success. <laughs> that rather. This young <coughs> preaching couple was even more excited now, yeah, because they knew that they were winning in mm -hmm. their minds, and, and, and I think that that of course is relative, you know, the concept of winning and success in ministry. Mm -hmm. But they were literally in their own pseudo humble way, yeah, yeah, yeah. saying, "Look at what God's done for us. <laughs> what do we say to these things?" What do we say to these things? <laughs> it's so uh, man. The false humility is is just. I believe if it's irritating to me, it has to be irritating to God. Absolutely. But then too, it also speaks to how do people define success in ministry? Right. So is success in ministry saving souls, leading mm -hmm. people to Christ, yeah. or is success in ministry dependent upon how many people are sitting in the pews or how many? views you have of on your live stream yeah so how to determine success well i do 
originally they said success was, was the budget, the bodies. Was it the building? The building. Mm. And, and that's why we have such, you know, humongous churches. And then there arises another generation and they're kind of empty. Yeah. Right. People yeah. used to equate success to a big building, a big budget and a whole bunch of bodies in the pews. Mm-hmm. And now I think we have to understand that that had nothing to do with God. Wow. PJ once said, my God had nothing to do with that. <laughs> I mean, nothing to do with that. Right. Yeah. But I, I really feel like th- there's a good conversation in, in the space of ministry vultures. Wow. Wow. How do we rid ourselves of this desire to be successful, Trey, just simply thinking that numbers make successful ministry? What is a successful ministry in God's eyes? I believe a successful ministry in the eyesight of God would have to be souls being saved. Yeah. Because I think at the end of the day, all that we do as Christians is to win souls for Christ. After we save souls, right, then we go into discipleship and then we get into all the other good things. Um, But I think for me, I just believe that um, success in the eyesight of God for us in ministry is just souls being saved. Absolutely. Because Jesus was concerned with saving souls. Right. 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 And so we can claim. We know to we might all be taking a test, mm. but we're not taking the same test. <laughs> right? That clearly some of us need to learn to keep our eyes on our own paper. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the Bible is very clear that some water, some plant, but it is God. Yeah, who gives increase. increase. Yes, sir. And my dad always says that you could go to any pastor of any mega church, quote unquote, what we consider or call a mega church, and ask them, correct, what did they do to grow their church? Uh-huh. And probably 10 times out of 10, they're not gonna be able to give you an answer <laughs> other than God did this. God did it. Because if there was some clear-cut manual of how you can amass 30,000 members. Yeah. I'm pretty sure, you know, everybody, <laughs> right? every church, 30,000 members. But when you, there are so many people, church could have hundreds of thousands of members. Right, right. Meaning members because we've saved souls. Absolutely. And, and I think for those of you who wonder what we're talking about, we are talking. And the reality was in this movie, we start up, you know, the movie opens with us understanding that Pastor, what's his name? Lee Curtis Child. Yes. Has literally went out and hired a film crew <laughs> to chronicle the, the you know, lost success and what he thought would be newly gained success. Mm-hmm. Like he would return back to his great place in ministry. Mm-hmm. In Atlanta, Georgia is where I believe it was, right? Yeah, yeah. And so the reality was that all of his members left. The Mm -hmm. scattered saints went to other sanctuaries. I think except five. Except for five. I think except for five, yeah. He went from, I think they said originally 25,000. Yeah, yeah. To five people. Five. Like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, like a husband and his wife, (laughs) a mama and a daughter, and a very educated young man, (laughs) right? Ain't that yeah. crazy? Yeah. And, and what was so crazy was, you know, and I know we were talking about competition and comparison, but we got to throw this in there. Doc threw the deacons out the church. He did. <laughs> he did. And he had an explanation. Do you remember his explanation? I do not. He said, uh, yeah, God told me uh, that for my church, deacons were not needed for the vision we had. He said they were just totally contrary. <laughs> Doc said he didn't need no help. He didn't need deacons, is what he was. What he but, was but you know, it was crazy though. At the same time, I don't know if the filmmakers kind of messed it up a little bit or not. Mm-hmm. 
because the husband and the wife were a deacon and a deaconess. Yeah. Wasn't that strange? Yeah, yeah that was kind of strange. But <laughs> it's like, what you throwing the deacons out for? Number one, I think he was throwing them out because he didn't want any checks and balances. See, we're, we're, see now we're about to get into some, some deep waters. <laughs> Take me to the water. We're about to get into some deep waters. Yeah. Okay, so I, I can see the checks and balances piece. <laughs> but what if... He had some deacons that were just fighting him at every turn. I can understand that side of the argument, and I believe there's some pre-cited for you right now. <laughs> I, I think there's some preachers who said, "Amen, Trey. <laughs> Amen, Pastor Trey." But I do believe I don't advocate throwing deacons out the church, though. I, I mean, do not advocate I because deacons are right. deacons are necessary. Deacons Absolutely. are necessary. So I don't want anybody to confuse. Okay, so cool. all of the diggers of restoration, we good. <laughs> we good. No, I said we good. We, we good. good. That's is not the right. But I think he threw them <clears> out. <throat> and, and I could just read into his character okay. and see that he had deacons somewhere he got lost. I saw someone online say it was because of the coins, mm. it's because of the money that he got lost. And what he desired probably was to amass more stuff. Mm -hmm. Deacon, which is all deacons that I've ever met, uh, sometimes just simply want to keep you close to the church. So I think maybe he was just being kept close, <laughs> and he was like, "Not nah, ain't what I'm trying to." Yeah, be. maybe I'm he didn't like the way they was trying. They was trying to keep him, except the one deacon that he kept. Except the one deacon that he retained. And why would he keep one deacon? You know what I mean? Over 20, 25,000 members. I just, I kind of wonder how many deacons did he have? Good Lord. He had to have had 500. <laughs> I mean, at least 500. You got 25,000 people. He had to have at least 500. Now, see, someone is saying maybe the deacons were thieves. Uh oh. I. Mm. You know, Hey. But, but the way he said it, he said there's was, no need to have uh, disciples that don't have discipline. He was adamant. Doc, he was looking so serious, and his wife looked down at him like, "No." <laughs> Her look gave, "No, Doc, you, you, you got rid of my favorite deaconess, Sister Clarita." Right, 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 you know? right, right, he's right. like, "You can't have disciples without <laughs> discipline." He got mad, y'all. So I'm just reading into his emotions. So do you disagree with him throwing the deacons out the church? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Where's my Bible? <laughs> that deacon, mm -hmm. they, they came about so that the preacher could simply Read the word of God, hear from God, and pray for the people. Mm -hmm. Praying and preaching, right? And mm -hmm. preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, the three P's, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, prayer, preaching, and preparation. That's what the diaconos, the deacons, the servants, that's what they're there for. So to eliminate them mm -hmm. puts more on the pastor. Mm -hmm. And then it puts him in a place and or a position where he can't properly prepare, preach, or pray. Okay, but you know, in Acts, right? Come in on Acts, with it. Now, uh -huh. one of the first things the deacons had to have was the oh, Holy Spirit. We're talking about requirements. They had Come to be now. filled with the Spirit. So is it possible that he got rid of the, <laughs> those deacons because they didn't have the Holy Ghost? <laughs> now, I ain't going to lie to you. It is possible. But I do think Except it's, the one that he kept. I think it's strange. Because that, that deacon was shouting now but, but when they went to the praise break. He was shouting. That de the deacon was Now, how many deacons you see shout during the praise oh, break? Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> you know, deacons like to put on sunglasses and fall asleep. <laughs> And they practice how to nod while they sleep. <laughs> y'all know y'all know y'all met some of them deacons. You know, once they do they once they do their uh what is it? Once they do their devotion. Man. All right, ram, ram. they say it in their sleep, y'all. <laughs> they say it in their sleep. But but I just think it is kind of funny. Now, mm -hmm. if if he had five hundred deacons like we suggested. And he only yeah, because it's not, that's not the move we just we just we just don't right. We just throw out hypotheticals. Yeah. If he hypothetically had five hundred deacons, 
How in the world he only know with one with the Holy Ghost? No, nah, bro. <laughs> no, nah, bro. I think Pastor went astray. I think Pastor went astray. And I'm not going to lie to you. Some of us do have a complex, right? Wow. That when we're in leadership and God grants us much success, we start to think we don't need God. Mm. And if we think we don't need God, you know we're going to think we don't need anybody else. I don't want us to get ahead of ourselves. That's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. We're going to get there. Mm, okay. You can see the title on so there. This, this, but what I'm, okay, so let's let's just do this. Uh-oh. Okay, we got about three minutes and we got to get a commercial break in. Okay, so <laughs> is it possible then that the reason he got rid of the deacon? Come on with it. Except the one. Uh-huh. Could it be that the one he kept was the one who was helping him with the stuff <laughs> he was accused of doing. Potentially. Potentially. We don't know. This is all hypothetical, right? And we don't want to get too far into hypotheticals. <laughs> but I will say this. It's interesting, though. I think it's very interesting mm-hmm. that a pastor can reach a level of success and begin to tear up his structure. Mm. The structure of leadership is important for a church to be successful. Absolutely. And so to hear that he has lost and scattered and hurt the saints because of his scandal Mm -hmm. makes me believe that it's all because he ripped away at the structure of leadership. So he could have got it's possible that he could have got he could have gotten rid of some of the deacons. And then, you know, some probably could have just left because they heard the scandal. Because some people will leave you yeah. based off what they hear about you. Absolutely. We'll say that too. Yeah. And then others probably knew what was going on. I ain't gonna lie. He said he got rid of them. <laughs> you you being nice. That preacher said he got rid of them deacons. Man, you know, it's easy for somebody to talk all big and bag and, and talk about what they did and the people ain't there to defend themselves. Well, that's true. The, the, the deacons, not one time did the camera crew <laughs> go interview the deacons that he put out. No, granted, they because they, and they didn't pay them. True. I to you. I you brought We got to remember that being in the church is not and does not have anything to do with how big your family is. Right. Being in leadership in the church has nothing to do with, you know, how much you've amassed in the secular world. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the fact that your granddaddy's name is on the pew. Right. Yeah. Or that he laid the first brick in the building. Go Good ahead. Lord. He laid the first brick in the building. <laughs> I ain't heard that one before. I, I have. Know, that joke old. <laughs> It's at what I'm saying is it has everything to do with it has every, I believe that's in first Timothy mm. first Timothy right mm. I believe like chapter three maybe man uh but but in first Timothy you can read first Timothy and second Timothy mm-hmm. or just google the requirements for a deacon and if it takes you to scripture that's what the Bible says Absolutely. because it's not about your secular prowess and what you've done in your job and what you you know amassed and who you are it's mm-hmm. not about any of that right being a deacon is not about being in charge. It's about being a servant. Oh, that last word? Mm-hmm. Servitude? Wow. Being a servant? That's a cuss word in church, ain't it? Like literally putting other people's needs before, before yours. yours. Ooh, ditto. Did we, what are we supposed to say? How'd it go? My I mean, kids do like, it all the time. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> if we could just get. Those who are saved, man, to understand servitude. Can we be preachers real quick? Go ahead. How much time we got? We got 15 seconds. Wherever you are, my question to you is how is your serve? Mm. How is your serve? How do you serve? Do you serve while complaining? Do you serve while while uh, uh, you know grumbling? Do you serve only till you get to a higher level of leadership or tier of leadership with people looking at you for the answers? How is your serve? I want to hear you on Facebook. Mm. If you want to call in, you can call in. We'll be back in a little bit, I believe. Absolutely. We got to get these commercial breaks in and then we'll be back on the other side. Keep it locked. This is Ooh, Straight Church no chase, um, with Pastor Trey and Pastor Lee Me. And uh, we're discussing the new movie. 
Uh-uh. Uh-uh. For Jesus. <laughs> Save your soul. Keep it locked. Yeah. This is Praise 965 FM WMGY. Yes, sir. You're listening to the Crown Prince. Family. Why do you think he got rid of them secrets? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear what y'all got. Why do you think it'll switching for a minute, but then it'll be fine? What you got? Just leave it. I think just leave it. Hey, we appreciate y'all being patient with us. We know that it keeps freezing. We know that you're having issues. Uh, we're gonna get. We're gonna fix it though. We want. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna fix it. I, I think it'll get better over time. Yeah, we'll fix it. Now, and we're gonna drop the replay. We're gonna drop the replay on our YouTube. All right, Pastor Gilbert, you did not watch the movie. I understand. Oh, oh, there it is. He didn't want to be held accountable. Uh oh, Sister Parker said they were meddling in his business. She used that old word, <laughs> meddling. <laughs> so, Spivey, you own one today. I love it. He got rid of the deacons because they were not co signing his stuff. That's serious, bro. Because some leaders only want yes men around them. <laughs> some people only want folk around them that are going to say yes, 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 right? Mm. They were in the way and they were in his business. Mm. I'm with you, sister. I'm with you, sister Liz. Uh, they were in his way and they were in his business, sister William. It's necessary for us to always know no matter how high you go in leadership, no matter if it's on your job, no matter if it's in the church. You have to make sure that you allow there to be some checks and balances. You won't always get it right. You won't always say it right. And as a, a leader who really wants to lead properly, you're going to want to hear the feedback of somebody to simply say, hey, Pastor, I think you could have did it a different way. I think you could have changed that a little bit. I think you could have shifted that a little bit. If y'all agree, just throw some hearts on the screen. I believe that all of us understand that we don't know it all. <laughs> and when you know that you don't know it all, you're going to do your best to do the best that you can. Even in leadership roles, you're going to try your best to make sure that others can help you and aid you to know what you don't know. Absolutely. Man. It's necessary. So, so family, look, I know there's some more of you coming in now. I know some of y'all are, you know, out and about. Some of y'all are chilling. Some of y'all are at work. How has your day been going? It's kind of raining outside. The sky's been great all day, right? <laughs> you know, I had my little, had my little hair spiked up like Trey, but you can tell Trey got in when the sun was still out. And once that rain touched my hair, my hair just flopped. We just true to it. Oh, you true? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Man. Hey, bro, playing. hey, bro, trying to come for me for the second time. This nah, is the second man. episode. He coming for me. For... Nah, but I'm, I'm look, just, I'm just speaking for me though. Be true to it. But fam, be true so, to it. so how y'all doing today? How's your day going? I woke up on Friday fulfillment this morning, and I and I always say this. This is my new word for Friday fulfillment. I always say a uh, good morning on this fantabulous Friday, right? Did you make that up? I made it up. <laughs> no, I don't think I did. I think I heard somebody else mess the word up. And they messed it up on accident. So now I just say it. You just say <laughs> it. You just say it. What is what is Friday Fulfillment? So Friday Fulfillment um, is something that we do at New Home every Friday at 7 a.m. Okay. I'm going to meet on there and give them something to chew on. Gotcha. Uh, for the next three days or until they see me on Sunday morning. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. We're trying to fulfill the week properly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, get yeah. to it. We back? Yep. Let's go, family. Great. I see you. You ready to go. <laughs> Montgomery's Inspiration Station. Praise 96.5 FM WMGY. Uh-huh. It's 357 right here in the capital city. And, of course, you're locked in with yours. Through the Crown Prince, Pastor Trey. And Pastor Libby. This is Straight Church. No chaser. Exclusively. Here on Praise 96.5 FM WMGY. So, Lee, we have uh, about three minutes or so before 
the four o'clock hour comes rushing in. So again, just in case you are just now tuning in to Straight Church No Chase, we want to let you know that we are discussing some of the themes and some of the viewpoints that we have concerning the new movie, Hunk for Jesus. <laughs> Save your soul. Oh yeah. So all in all, how do you how do you think uh the movie? Let me ask you this. I, I ask you this question. Okay, let's go. How how has mm -hmm. you personally assess and you know, behooves myself and other young preachers uh, to understand that it's our job to make sure that people see the realness and the truth of what ministry is one way or the other, mm -hmm. you know, that it's not all about. And I think that's something we wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. it, there's things that matter more than having a Gucci belt. <laughs> there, there are things more than having pizza and then riding uh, and pulling up in the nicest whip. Yeah. Um, let's just say that the savior matters more than your stuff. Absolutely. That that the master matters more than your materialistic things. So how do you communicate that to young preachers though, where they can understand and have the right priority with respect to ministry? Um, I think I just did, but I, I'll also throw this tagline in and I pray somebody's listening. Don't <laughs> we'll see you on the other side. On the other side of the fourth like hour. Keep a lot. This is praise. Next five FM WMG Wise. Uh oh. Pastor Trey just got me in trouble, family. Why just, you always got to blame stuff on me? Look, I just, <laughs> I just made a statement. I just made a statement. <clears throat> Pastors don't have a cheap ministry living an expensive life. What do y'all think about it? What does it mean? What What does it mean? This is Terry Barber. <laughs> on behalf of our families, we want to what does it mean, family? AM 800 and FM 96.5 W243. Somebody mad at me. Uh oh. We are a little engine broadcasting station. This is crazy. Somebody's mad at me. I'm excited. I really want to see. What does that mean to you? What do you think that means, family? And I know, and I know the Wi Fi is still active, though. Um, Thank y'all for bearing with us, though. Thank y'all for bearing with us. Please. Please be patient with us. Oh, be patient. Now, I think this thing is really acting up. Sister Betsy Marshall, I'm glad that you're having a good day. Sister Williams, you're getting off of work, feeling great. I love it. Sister Tamika Parker said Friday fulfillment is the bomb.com. <laughs> Bless you. Child of God, woman of God. Pray God, pray God, pray God, pray God. <laughs> you say it, it makes you feel better. No. Say pray God, no. pray God. No. Pray God. No. <laughs> oh, you ready to go? Now, now, y'all can't be running from your job and we just talked about being a servant. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We just talked about being a servant. You can't be running from your job. Now, I hope y'all did not steal no time this morning. <laughs> and be clocking in early and leaving. Uh, leave, leave it. Why, you, why you got to mess with them people? <laughs> Look, I'm messing with myself. <laughs> good God. <laughs> Ain't he a good God? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be found guilty of stealing time. Man. I think the broadcast is really blotchy. and it's messing people up, but we're going to get this fixed, y'all. We want y'all to chill with us. We want you to rock out with us. Keep listening. Don't don't leave us. Don't leave us. Uh-oh. Woo! We have to be more concerned about serving God <laughs> than pleasing man. You're speaking truth. You see my wife? What you I need to leave that one alone. <laughs> Listen to your wife, God. 
You supposed to tell me press play, baby. You supposed to say push it, push it. I saw my wife on here. Shouts out to my wife. I saw her somewhere in the comments. Nah. What's up, babe? Yeah, she on there. What well, she was. She was. <laughs> she she had work trying to watch and work. Oh Lord. <laughs> Don't get in no trouble. Don't get in. Uh, they still gonna be my friend. I love them to death. I but, got you. But I really, I really think that that's what his issue was. Oh, bro. That's a very serious issue, though. Yeah. Like, that's a very serious It's dangerous to lose focus and to have the wrong perspective in ministry. It's very dangerous when you make ministry about you and not about God. Right, 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 right. right because right, right. then, in essence, you are becoming a God to God's people. And we see clearly all throughout Scripture yeah. how God deals with people who try to be a God to his people. True. but but And, and it's not really an indictment on everybody. It's just the reality that we have to stop trying to be what others who have been doing it for a long time already are. Yeah. Just have to be who we are. Yeah, and that's the part people don't realize. You know, it's okay to have nice things. Yeah, yeah. Man. But if you're not at that place yet, yep. you need to be focusing on ministry. Yep, yep. You know, we look up to a lot of preachers. We look up to a lot of people. We look up to a lot of successful people just period, point blank. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we want what they have, uh, and we have not ever done the work. We don't have the credentials. We don't have the that they have. No. Nah, they they sold they sold their tears. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they sold their tears. Yeah, man. Gilbert said, "Gucci belts don't come in his size." <laughs> Uh, man, brother, crazy man, but yeah, it, it's that's that's conversation. And that's what convention that was that was a not convention, but rather, uh, their, their big uh soiree. There was a preacher that talked about that then, and they're always talking to young preachers. Mm. Because we get caught up in the hype of how we look sometimes, mm. and we never think about what's coming out of our lips, right? Wow. And I think that's I think that's big because, because that's the issue that he had. Yeah, and it doesn't matter how good you look if you ain't saying nothing. Doc, he stepped in some gum and he started yelling curse words. Yep. Because it was his I forget what type of name name brand shoe it was. Yes. Yeah, he turns around and he shows us this luxurious, you know, color. every color suit, shoes, <laughs> size that look like a box of crayon. <laughs> and she asked for, or I think she was saying, like, what are we gonna wear on our? I'm about saying his wife went too far behind. Oh, she, went, she, she, she was she, matching his fly. You, you're right there with them. She was right there. Sister Rachel said they be sharp but can't preach. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. It, it's it's an indictment though. It's an indictment, Doc, because I heard a preacher, uh, one of my brothers, share with me that when he went to convention. And so, anyways, I and lie. they I and a lot of people old. think Easter Sunday uh -oh. is the church's biggest fashion show. Sound like we need to wear jeans on Easter. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how some people will spend more on what they wear, right? For one service, right? They'll spend more on what they wear for one service, then they'll spend on their word, and, and, and it's in the movie. Because he was chilling on the other side of the church trying to rehearse his sermon. No Bible in his hand, but trying to rehearse his sermon. And the first thing we know yeah. is that he wears expensive clothes. But And we never saw him studying. He ain't studied up. I think he turned his whole pastor's office into the closet. <laughs> that was a big closet. No, it was, it was, that it was, was a too, big closet. It was too <clears throat> much, bro. It was too Huge much. Huge closet. Okay. All right. We back? Ma 
Montgomery's Inspiration Station, Fergie's 96.5 MGY. Two minutes inside of the 4 o'clock hour. It's mm-hmm. 407 right here at Capital Stray. And Pastor Levy. This is Straight Church. No chaser. Where we keep things real, relevant, and righteous. Absolutely. All I just want to tell somebody, you know, that last statement I made about, you know, don't don't get to be real. You know, I was talking to Pastor Trey off the air and to the Facebook. I was telling I've heard the stories of how how many just don't go to class. On some gator boots, wow. right? On some alligator slides, right? Wow. Damn. Never studied. But he showed was practicing a sermon. Never studied. Now, how are you practicing your sermon and you ain't studying? And, and so I think the importance um, and the validity of what you stated at the during the last segment, was in context with the movie. BB say you seen that movie. If you love the church, yeah, it's gonna touch on you a little bit. Yeah. In a good, um, uh, I, well, everybody's different, okay. but it, it's definitely gonna it's gonna feel on you a little bit though. It's gonna it, touch on you. Yeah, I pray that it touches on you in a good way, in a way that will cause you to be more responsible. Absolutely, with your actions. We're going to always, you know, be kind of skewed in perception yeah. when it comes to the world. And one of the interesting things about uh, the movie Hunk for Jesus, a Save Your Soul, is that the movie is a satire. It's a satire. So if you're just now tuning in and you have no idea what a satire is, you're it's all good because we got you covered. Absolutely. It's a satire. Tell it me. is a television show or film in the genre right Mm -hmm. which is fictional or pseudo fictional this literally will joke and or give a different controversial perspective concerning political things concerning religious things concerning a social variety of things so it was within its genre so the movie did what it was supposed to have done it did what it was supposed to do (laughs) it did its purpose it did what it was supposed to do so one of the things that um we saw within the movie um uh-oh. It, it caused us to ask each other a question when, when we were talking. Right. I think it was yesterday. Mm-hmm. And the question was raised, what matters more? What matters more? Materialism or the master? Wow. Because in the movie, oftentimes, Pastor Lee Curtis Childs mm. seemingly cared more about his name, his reputation, yeah. and his appearance more than he did about God. Period. Right. right. So, my question to you is: In ministry, what matters more? Man, and I, I think you said it earlier. It's the it's the B clause of the <laughs> title of this movie, mm. "Saving Souls." Yeah, uh, that's what it's about. Our jobs, literally, ladies and gentlemen, every preacher that you meet, every pastor, every bishop, every overseer, every apostle, they are simply to be the John the Baptist for Jesus Christ. That's it. Absolutely. Your job is to introduce him. <laughs> Your job is to take people to him. 
Your job is to show people how to be like him. Yeah. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. I don't care how big your building is. I don't care how many bodies are in your seats. I don't care how many chairs you got to pull into the aisles. I don't care how big your budget is. I don't care what your offering numbers look like. It's all about us showing people Jesus Christ. And if we keep Jesus the main thing. The main thing, the main thing. <laughs> Like everything would take care of itself. Absolutely. But one of the things that um, Pastor Lee Curtis Childs on yeah. the movie Hunt for Jesus, Save Your Soul, he often referred to the church he was pastoring. Right. Wandering to Greater Paths Baptist Church, the same church he was pastoring. Right. He often referred to it as his church. Oh, my God. Now, I think there's something we got to talk about. About because I believe that when the Lord talked to that brother by the name of Peter, after he talked to all the other disciples, mm -hmm. he said, upon this rock, I shall build my church. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you found the church. It doesn't matter if you're not the founder and you're at an established church. I understand the nature of being possessive in language concerning your buy-in with the full and or the large entity. Mm -hmm. But please never get it mistaken. It is not your church. Mm -hmm. They are not your members. They're your members, quote unquote, by way of stewardship, stewardship. Yep. not ownership. Yep. You don't own nobody. <laughs> you don't. So ain't nobody stole your members. And he, Pastor Lee Curtis Childs in the movie, uh -oh. often referred to the members of the congregation as his members. He did. And he felt threatened. Absolutely. When the people, because of the scandal and various other reasons, uh -huh. decided to leave Wonder to Greater Pass Baptist Church to go down the road to another church. The God. Yeah. That the church is the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ. And that we are called to be shepherds. Yep. And with that calling, the Lord is very specific on how we are to treat his bride and shepherd his people. And so the people are ours and the church is ours, again, by stewardship. Stewardship. By servanthood. Your last name. <laughs> <laughs> with a D. With a D. But not ownership. Not ownership. Not, they're not our members. They're members of the body of Christ. So let me ask you something. Do you think, with that being stated then, do you think that members owe their pastor a level of loyalty and allegiance? I think members owe God loyalty and allegiance. I get that. But what I'm saying is... <sighs> If we look at the context of the movie, okay. If we look at the context of the movie, all right. And we look at the fact that in the movie, the first lady and one of the former members, you know, threw shots at each other. She did. She was messy. She was a messy saint. Yeah. And she felt, and the first lady felt some type of way because she wanted the lady to stick and stand by them. Right. Because oftentimes when members go through things, they want their pastor to stick and stand by them when they go through their mess, when they go through their problems, their issues, whatever drama they have in their life, right. they want their pastor and or first lady to stand by them. That's true. But uh -huh. when pastors and first ladies and the first family, if you want to use that terminology, I whatever, when pastors go through their issues, their struggles, their pains, their setbacks, their dramas. Yeah. Mem oftentimes members leave. Members so, leave. Is do do members old pastors the same loyal allegiance and dedication that they want from their pastors? Should it be reciprocated? I, I, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be very brutally honest. Mm -hmm. Their allegiance and their loyalty should be to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. I, I understand because I am a pastor, but I'm also a PK, right? Mm -hmm. In the lives of a first family, in the lives of a pastor, things might happen that people don't appreciate, people don't go with, people don't necessarily agree with, people might not even care that it happened to the extent that they don't want to be connected to it. Now, if God tells them to leave, right? Bye bye, bye, <laughs> bye bye, so long, bye <laughs> bye. 
But if God didn't tell you to leave and you made that venture off because of your ego, mm -hmm. because of what you think it could do to your name, now you're out of order. And I'm not worried because God will handle that. Right. So I think for the lady who is being messy in the mall, mm -hmm. who says she left because she was a principal, I believe, and mm -hmm. she couldn't be connected to what was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, if God didn't tell her to leave, let God handle that. But I will say this. We have to understand. Yes, pastors are human. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody makes mistakes. Right. We don't desire for people to leave us when we make mistakes, especially when we have been beside them after they made mistake after mistake after mistake after the mistake. But if God tells them to leave, doc, they got to go. In, in most cases, though, God ain't told them nothing. <laughs> they just went. They didn't pray for you. They didn't think about you. They just heard what was being said in the streets and just, oh. Uh. And majority of the time, they knew before it hit the, hit the streets loud. Deuces. Yeah, because you know, half the saints in the street, too. See, there you go. Uh oh. See, there, well, I don't know I'm why sorry. you want to do that. I don't know why you want to take it. Well, there. you know, church folk not have to talk about No, 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 no. But since we're there, okay. and, and this happened in the movie, so was it wrong then mm -hmm. for the first lady yeah. to defend herself and her husband, which is the pastor, right? Um, not necessarily defend the scandal, but to defend themselves from the allegations and from the quote unquote attacks and or shadiness that the former member was throwing her way because she was, you know, attacking the lady. She was shady with it, but she did it. <laughs> you, hello, I lost the, I lost the question. <laughs> was it wrong with the first lady? Yeah. No, nah, you know, it, it. to be honest, a lot of people don't understand that Although people place pastors and the first family on pedestals, mm. the pastor and the first family take a lot of things personally. Yeah. Um, and we take it personally because we're in a ministry that's personal. Mm -hmm. Right. So it does hurt our feelings when you do things that we haven't done to you. We look for recipro uh, reciprocity as well. Yes, sir. But I, I, I do understand, you know, ultimately. They need to be loyal to God. And that's the pastor in me. They need to be loyal to God. If God says that you need to leave, then leave. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm by myself, maybe God wants me by myself for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, if God wants me by myself, maybe he wants me in obscurity for my development. Mm -hmm. But I think in the in the in this movie, yeah, they didn't leave because of the master, they left because of messiness. <laughs> and I do understand that the 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 the, <clears throat> the reality or or even the degree of the scandal was scary for some people yeah it was it was it was hey, tough man that's it's a real tough one doc it's tough but it's tough man it's but if tough. god doesn't tell you to leave then you need to stay because god does always connect people when others are in a pit so that they can pull them out of it Man. I think that's why he still had the five. <laughs> <laughs> and they were standing strong. Oh, they were there. They were standing strong. Five. Died. Number of grace. He prepared for baptism on the altar. You saw that? Let's not even talk about that. Nah, she held him under the water so long, I thought he was going to leave up out of here. Talk about that. <laughs> and the fact that he was upset with her after the baptism. You know what? They did a couple of things after the baptism that just kind of made me like. Oh, that was during the baptism. Look. But I'm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm need to say amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about after the baptism when they got in the car. Oh yeah, and they started. <laughs> they was on the way home. They started singing "Nucky If You Fuck" at it. <laughs> and I bet you everybody <laughs> who saved now, who remember "Nucky If You Fuck," was probably <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit they fist with they, with they palm and probably singing the part, singing the song, singing the lyrics. Yeah, we knock you. Okay, all yeah, right. don't don't do that. This is a gospel station. <laughs> Listen once again uh, for those of you if you just not tuning in. This is yours truly, the Crown Prince, Pastor Trey. And Pastor Lee, me. This is Straight Church, No, no Chaser. Chaser. I was supposed to let you do. I'm sorry. No, we in now. It's all good. It's your ball. <laughs> <laughs> Where we keep things real relevant and righteous and uh, we're discussing some of the themes uh that we saw in the new movie absolutely <laughs> the new movie hunk for jesus hunk for jesus save your soul Ooh. and uh, if you haven't seen it go check it out because we, we definitely want to know what you think about it hey trey can you do something before we get off what's up do that you do that no 
<laughs> Listen, uh, we got about 30 seconds. We have to uh, play some music and uh, let a couple of commercials roll through, and then we'll be back. So yeah. keep it locked. This is Praise 96.5 FM, WMG. <laughs> I agree with you all. I see them. They're talking about how putting pastors on a pedestal and look at themselves. We won't have this problem. I think Pastor Keon Henderson, Pastor Keon Henderson put out a video. There's a reel a few a few weeks ago. He put out a reel and he was saying, Pastor Trey, mm-hmm. that the people in the pew put more pressure on the pulpit than they do on themselves. That's true. And learn more. I think that was, man, is it's a harsh truth, right? True, yeah. That oftentimes we place people so high, yep. we put so much pressure on them yep. to be Superman. Yep. And when I got a little older, I found out, Trey, that Superman has to take off his cape at some point, too. Wow. This would be Clark Kent. Batman eventually takes off his cape and drives back into the cave mm. so that he could be What's his name? Wayne? Bruce Wayne. There you go. <laughs> and so when do pastors and when do we allow preachers and their first families wow. to take off their cape and, and be humans? humans? I, I think it touched on that. And that's a good conversation that that this 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 movie let us see their human side mm-hmm. in that car. Yeah. At that moment. Yeah. They begin to sing knuck if you buck. I'm somebody came out of nowhere. But why why but why do you think that those in the pews don't want pastors to be human, so to speak? Because they have a way of saying, Well, pastors, I don't think a pastor should do this. Yeah, I don't think pastors should do this. He's a pastor. Why he doing that? Why he saying that? Why is he dressing like that? Who came up with these more ethic codes? Right? And, and I think that's what's crazy. Yeah. But you know where it really comes from? I mean, we kind of talked about it last week. Luke 15, you start looking at that uh, older brother, the okay, prodigal yeah. son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think people get mad when they see preachers and or pastors or their families having fun that they thought they couldn't have. So the initial response is not, look at them. They having fun. So now I know I can live life, be a Christian and have fun, too. Mm-hmm. Their initial response in days of old, and especially in traditional settings, would be, you ain't supposed to do that. Mm. Right? Because they were hazed in that traditional nature. Mm-hmm. They wanted to do the same for every generation that came up and everybody. Mm. Right? Tell your wife she can't wear pants. <laughs> right? Oh, wow. Tell you that you can't wear a t-shirt without a blazer when you're preaching. Because mm. a preacher will always cover his body. Yeah. Right? You don't don't wear no uh uh uh, uh don't wear no blue on first Sunday. Mm. Women, you're supposed to be in white always because they were hazed into those traditional values. I think they tend to do the same for everybody else. <laughs> Ain't it crazy though? You know, yeah. if, if we had a to-do list for the pews, doc, it probably but be some biblical. preachers do though. Oh, really? Some preachers do. Help me. Oh, talking about Some casino, pre- maybe? Preachers say that folk can't go to the casino. No tattoos. No tattoos. No smoking. Oh, that's what the preachers say. No drink. Now, because some preachers and in, in some denominational settings, they tell you off the rip, no, no, you know what I'm saying? In, in certain denominations, you can't wear them. Tell your wife, no makeup, no pants. You know what I'm saying? Can't listen to certain music. Because uh-huh. if they're not talking about Jesus, it's devil music. Uh huh. I mean, so it's a lot. It's it's a lot. It's a I lot. see you, Sister Spider. I see you, Sister William. They had stuff like you shouldn't be in the pulpit without a suit on. You shouldn't be in there without a robe too. I didn't heard that before. <laughs> Sister Spider said those aren't traditions; they're rituals. Oh my God, we ain't ready for that conversation. Look, they so ain't ready. And, and and so Trey, why is it that those who claim to be at a certain level and or degree in religiosity mm-hmm. are turning into modern Pharisees. Because they're in religiosity. Uh-oh. Come like, weren't here. the Pharisees most notably known for being hypocrites? Like, what is the one thing that Jesus repeatedly accused them of being? Right. 
hypocrites. Right, right. And he steadily told them, and I'm paraphrasing, that you all have all these rules and traditions for the people yeah. that you yourselves are not living up to. You set a standard that you are not even able to meet. And, and that's what the Pharisees, the Sadducees did, right? Wow. And so Jesus comes mm -hmm. to remove the rules <laughs> and begin a relationship. Wow. Because the relationship will dictate the rules. Say that again. The relationship you have with Christ mm -hmm. will dictate the rules that you must follow. Okay, let's deal with it. I think there's a reality that all of us have different levels of wow. ability to manage different things because of our sensitivity, because of our immaturity, right? That I can listen to future mm -hmm. and it not harm me at all. I can listen to it surely for entertainment value. Wow. But there'd be a 13-year-old or yeah. someone else, maybe yeah. even a 20, 30-year-old, who can listen to future and it causes them to go astray. So what may be a stumbling block for one may not be a stumbling block for others. There it is. Got you. Got you. Because all of us have different walks. All of us have different degrees of depths of relationship. Mm -hmm. And all of us know how to process life differently. Now, I, I love this, and I love to hear what y'all have to say. Uh, I love to hear what y'all have to say. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I see you, Sister Williams. Uh, I see you, Sister Sister Nate. Yeah, absolutely. Like Sister Williams said, no, that, that soup does not register as anointing. And I know, Sister Nate, you're talking about it. Some think it does. I don't care whether you wear a suit on Sunday to preach a sermon or a T-shirt. The oil that's on your life has never been determined by the attire that you put on. Man. Matter of fact, one thing that I tell everyone is I'm not worried so much about your attire as much as I'm worried about your attendance. Mm. I'd rather you come and us find you a white robe to put on because mm -hmm. you ain't got no good clothes mm -hmm. versus us being so concerned about your clothing that you never get to come. Wow. I mean, it's it's <clears throat> God is not looking at the outside; He's looking at the inside. So I think that pulls us back to our, our initial conversation because we done went to a whole nother. Yeah, but they're all interconnected. It's though. all there. They're interwoven, so you can't help but <laughs> it's, it's, but to talk about all of it. Like it's, it's all there, Doc. And this film brought out so much. It's so rich. It's so pregnant with 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 conversational points, Doc. That we can't even we can't even push every point today. Uh, but I do encourage you all, I encourage you all to go watch this film. I want you to look at how the world and how others view mega ministry and or the black church culture. And I want you to not lose your mind That's serious. over the reality uh, or rather over the thought that this is an attack against the culture versus it being an opportunity to expose us to what we are allowing ourselves uh, to, 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 to create within our culture. Yeah. Do you know how many monsters we've created in church culture? Wow. Do you know how many immature people that we put on pedestals and, and then, then we low, we slowly find out that they couldn't handle it. And how many times we protect the predators. Wow. Talk about it. <laughs> talk, look them in the face. We, we, we protect predators. We mm -hmm. do. Oftentimes. We do. God today. We, do. we know people are doing foul stuff. And instead of us addressing them, you know, in the way that Christ taught us to, we hide it. We're silent when we should speak. And Ooh. oftentimes we speak when we should be silent. Ooh. The, the movie that was there too. It, it, it did. We protect predators. Protect them. It, do you remember when the young man pulls up in the car? Yeah. And the wife looks at him. Yeah. She begins to stare. Yeah. And she says, Pastor's getting right with God now. Mm. <laughs> you write about it. I like that comment. It should be 1,700 people on here. <laughs> if only we could get them to click in. Matter of fact, share it one more time and see if somebody else comes in. Yeah. She, she tells him that Bishop is getting right. He's getting right with God. And the young man stares her in the face. Could not believe anything that she's saying because he doesn't understand why in the world mm. this pastor could do what he did and still think that God needed him wow. 
to save souls. Now, this is a whole nother perspective. This is the perspective of those who have church trauma and church hurt. Yeah, which we talked about that last week. A little man, bit anyway. man. It's serious, though. Man. It's serious. <laughs> God's going to definitely hold us accountable for our actions. So how important is our integrity? Doc, we're going to talk about that on the live. <laughs> we're going we gonna to talk about integrity on the line. I want Ask them that, Trey. I think they need to, to chime in. Ask the people that? Ask the people. Ask I, the people. I'll ask the people that. So to all the people out there, tell us how important is our integrity? Integrity as the preacher? As preachers and those who are in the pews on both sides, not just the pastors. But for those who are in the, the pew, as Christians, I put it like that. How important is our integrity as mm. Christians? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. How important, how important. Most folks stay away because we judge them on what they wear and how they look. I don't care for that long dress. We must teach God, and with that, we teach appropriate. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. They giving you all the amens. Here it is. Integrity is what is needed today. <laughs> Integrity is key. Integrity as ministers, period, is very important. Whatever the area. Oh, oh, that's my wife. That's that's, that's my baby. What's up, baby? That's that's for a lady. <laughs> Montgomery's Inspiration Station, phrase 96.5 FM, WMGY. It's 434 right here in the capital city. And you're still hanging with yours truth, the Grand Prince, Pastor Trey. Pastor Libby. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> this is Straight Church. No chasing. And uh, this is where we keep things real, uh -huh. relevant. Uh -huh. And righteous. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we spent the majority of our time uh, today's show talking about the new movie, Hunk for Jesus. Hunk for Jesus. Save your soul. And let me let me do this real quick. Go ahead. For those of you listening, please remember, sir, make sure you do not forget to go to your smartphone's app store and search for Praise 96.5 FM. Download the app so that way you can take it with you can take us with you no matter where you go. Wherever you go. So make sure you head over to your smartphone's app store right now and download the Praise 96.5 FM mobile app. Now, now, let's uh, continue the conversation. Yeah. And I asked the question offline and you wanted to deal with it on the microphone. Yeah, I think it's, somebody wants to call in on so, this one. So we're definitely going to we're definitely going to, to deal with it. Oh, man. So the question that's before us, and those who are joining us on Facebook and YouTube have been chiming in. The question is, as Christians, how important is our integrity? Yeah. How important as Christians? Hey, you can dial up at 334-398. Hit us up. 8791. Again, that's 334-398-8791. How important is our integrity as Christians as Christians yeah can you give us a working definition of integrity oh man now I'll tell you one that 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 you know in my job that they always teach it is doing the right thing when no one is looking Ooh, <laughs> that's what they teach <laughs> integrity is doing the right thing when no one is looking because wow. because it's easy for us to do it when everybody's looking mm. but what about when nobody's looking uh -uh. Now we know God is always looking, right? Yeah. But but some of us lack integrity because we're one way on Sunday, mm. between the hours of ten to eleven thirty, mm -hmm. or between the hours. What time is the restoration? We got to get everybody. Come on, nine, nine, and ten, nine and ten, and mm -hmm. then there's some other folk from eight to nine fifteen, yep, right? Yep, yep, yep. We do it in church. Mama taught us to turn on our radio when we come on holy ground. Mm -hmm. But some of us act the fool Sunday evening. <laughs> Let that football come on. Okay, but what about some people who feel like, you know, I'm just I'm just living my life. Like I'm just I'm just being me. Okay. I'm just being transparent. You know, I'm just wow. I'm just living my life. I'm living my best life, my blessed life. I'm just being me. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm just being me. 
So, so that's a statement of freedom, right? Yeah. And I would tell them that you're free in Christ too. Mm -hmm. I, I think when all of us know where we're going and where we intend on ending up as in destination, mm -hmm. we're going to naturally live in a way that'll get us there. And if you want to be a Christian, and you want to make it to heaven. I think naturally there's some things that you just don't desire or want to do. I'm not making the rules today. So, but what I'm, uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. But mm -hmm. we, I mean, we do have instances where, for instance, right, people listening to music, right? Okay, okay. So, as you stated, our parents taught us growing up, a lot of us, that when you come on church ground, turn that other stuff off. Turn it down, doc. So then, is it wrong then if someone? listens to r b or rap on their way to church now you're going back to episode number one. Oh, oh, oh you're talking on the way to church yeah on the way to church i'm see that i'm not even going back to right, right. i ain't even going back all right, all right, all right. i ain't even going back <laughs> now i'm not going to say that that person is wrong but what i will say is uh is that the bible lets us know that we ought to be prepared for worship the same way some of us have pre-game to go to the club, pre-game to go to the to the tailgate. sock hop. That's the old folk to the <laughs> sock hop, uh, to the tailgate, to all of those things. I mean, with with praise ninety six point five FM on in the morning, Sunday morning. Why not get your praise on when you're about to go to a praise party? Mm -hmm. Like, why not the same way that we're taught to stretch in the gym mm -hmm. before we ever begin the workout, mm -hmm. so that we don't pull any muscles. How about we start stretching our praise muscles, right? Mm -hmm. Learning what praise positions we can get in, right? Yeah. Before we ever get to the praise party we call sanctuary and church on Sunday morning. Absolutely. I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you, Trey. When I buy clothes, I make sure they're praise proof. <laughs> yeah, if, if I extend my hands above my head, is it going to come up to my navel? <laughs> Come on, like, let's be real. I put on a suit. I'm like, can I worship him in this? So is it being fake then for somebody being one way at church and, and another way outside of church like when people say that it's kind of a blanket statement so kind of give us a, a working definition to work with what, what so when people say people be one way at church and another way outside of church generally what are people saying when they say that what most are attempting to say and i've said something to that extent myself right to that degree what most of us are intentionally what we're trying to emphasize is really um, that we have to learn to be consistent in our faith mm. more than, you know, I believe your faith in your relationship dictates what you do. Okay. And I think all of us are growing in our relationship. So mm -hmm. as we continue to grow in relationship with God, there are certain things that we won't do over time. Mm -hmm. It's a process. Sanctification is a process, right? Mm -hmm. All of us don't stop clean turkey with doing everything. Right. Matter of fact, I get scared when I see people say that that's what they did <laughs> because I don't believe them. And I, I really want to tell them, you don't have to con me out. right? You don't, <laughs> you don't have to lie to me. I'm not asking for a lie, right? It's okay for you to be normal and human and believe come into what God wants you to become. He never said you got to already be it. He didn't say it's going to happen as soon as the preacher grabs your hand and mm -hmm. you give God your heart. He did not say as soon as you touch that water, <laughs> you come up and everything going to be fine. Yeah, now, yeah. now let me mention this. You should not go down a dry devil and come up a wet devil. Oh, Lord. Right. Oh, but Lord. you should understand that it's a process. Yeah. So slowly but surely your taste won't be the same. So then with that being said, for Pastor Lee Curtis mm -hmm. in the movie Hunk for Jesus, Save Your Soul. That's not me for y'all. It's when, in the movie. When he got baptized, rebaptized, and in his words, resaved. That's not resaved. And and, and the conversation of rebaptism, that's a whole nother conversation. He for said, I'm saved again. A whole nother <laughs> day. That that come that right there. But was it so for him to go back, mm -hmm. so after, after, the, after the baptism, right, and him uh -huh. and his wife get in the car, yeah. and they they just turn up to knuck if you buck. Knuck if you buck. Was that them being inconsistent as far as with their faith and their lifestyle? Mm -hmm. So how do you delineate between the two? Like, how do you deal with that? I, I, think, I think that we don't even have to delineate between those two. I really think that was an expression of where they were mentally. I think music is an expression and they were discreetly having their own type of fun. 
And that song in in some people's eyes would 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 push for violence because that's what we've experienced. <laughs> but in that moment, it was them getting some stress off of them. How about we take it that way? I, I think that's really what it was. They joined together as husband and wife and and in a very joking and or surprising way, mm -hmm. they begin to recite every chorus, every line. I mean, you know, like, neck of you, but it, it hey. It's but crushed. they listen to it now on their way to go confront two pastors that they weren't really cool with. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and if you and if you if you argue the point that they were listening to that to get some stress off of them, you probably could see that because once they got there, they were probably more calm <laughs> than they, you know, what I'm saying probably would have been had they not got that stress off of them. True, potentially, but I will say they didn't act up though. They didn't act up, you know. They didn't act up, act up for real. They didn't act up. I, I think that that part of the movie was simply to show their human side, and that's where I took it. I took it as the moment for them in the satire film to build upon the human character of a past and a first lady, mm -hmm. right? That we are humans. Uh, you're human, right, Trey? You're not a robot, right? Last time I checked, I'm, I'm human. Nanu, nanu, nanu. Definitely ain't with none of that right there. Nanu, nanu, <laughs> that ET stuff. Definitely ain't with that. <laughs> Definitely not with that. Yeah, you you legitimately, um, you legitimately are human, and it's because of that that we get in the vein of understanding that we don't have to put people on a pedestal. Rather recognize that they are simply vessels that the Lord desires to use. Yeah, I want to hear what y'all got to say about integrity. Y'all can hit us up. Yeah, let us know. What do you What do you think? How, as Christians, how important is our integrity? And so when we asked the question on Facebook, Miss Sonya Mills McCall said integrity is what is needed today. Yeah. Very important. Miss Donna said integrity is the key. My wife, my my sweet thing, my sugar pie, all that good stuff. All right, Reverend. Later. <laughs> hey, man, I hate on me. I'm getting it all in. Look, I, I got to go home tonight. Look. I'm getting it all in. <laughs> no, but but my wife said, Alton is, she said integrity uh, as ministers, period, is very important uh -huh. in whatever area. Uh, Ms. Nay Wilson said integrity is always important. Doing the right thing when no one sees it. Uh, but you and God, if I know you'll do the right thing when I can't see it, I know you'll do the right thing in my face. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Ms. Daisha said the lack of integrity is what keeps most people away. Miss Elizabeth said integrity is very important. Uh, let's see. Miss Quartation, she said, uh, some do not have integrity because they lack maturity in Christ. Miss Betsy Marshall said integrity is important because it keeps us on the right path with God. So we're getting a lot of feedback on Facebook, but if you want to call in and let us know what you think about how important integrity is for us as Christians. You can do so. Hit us up right now. The number to dial is 398-8791. Again, 398-8791. Because integrity is not just important for preachers. Nope. But it's also important for everyone. Absolutely. Everyone. I, I want to say everyone, even outside of the world of Christianity. Mm. If this world operated in a greater level of integrity, then this world would be a better place. Yeah. 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 Well, it will be a better place. So do you think there's a double a double standard that exists? Talk to me. With uh people wanting pastors to operate with integrity in all phases of their lives, both personal and private, but yet within the pews, that same standard is, is not applicable. You know, and, and 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 so I'm just I'm so much of an open thinker in moments. Mm -hmm. I'll share what what just hit my spirit when you said that okay um it was the reality that we should be okay with it mm. with being hold on being okay as with, preachers we should be okay with okay it. with that being a double because we are held to a higher standard mm -hmm. and i know the pressure that people put on us but if we said yes to god we should perform like we said yes to god and as if we understand that and how sensitive it is for us to lose our witness but shouldn't that same thing it should be applied to the pews it that if should. they say yes to god it should 
It should. That they should live up to that. Yes. It should. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm and that's why I said my mind's kind of open. Um, and, and there's someone calling. We're gonna let you on in a few seconds. Mm-hmm. My mind is open because I realize this. It's easy to look at somebody else and say what they should do. Mm-hmm. It's always harder for you to look at the mirror. Man, let's check it out. So what happened? If a lot of people would just look at the person in the mirror, but we're gonna talk about that later. Oh God, <laughs> Carla, you're on the air. How you feeling today? Hi, Pastor. How you doing today? I'm doing well. So tell us, do you how important is integrity for us as Christians? It's very important. <laughs> One thing I learned about integrity, I learned about integrity. Honestly. Carl, are you there? Did, did we lose you? No, I was talking about the word integrity is being, for me, it means honesty. You know, like if you say you're going to do something, you know, do it. Absolutely. We, we agree with you 1,000%. 1,000%. Thank you so much. But listen, Pastor Stewart, I called for two reasons. That, uh, I want to know the name of that movie y'all have been talking about. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. It's uh the name of the movie is Hunk for Jesus, Save Your Soul. Hunk for Jesus, Save Your Soul. The word is playing it. It's it's currently on Peacock, the app. If you have the app Peacock as well as in the movie theaters. Okay, is it here, Montgomery? Absolutely, yes, ma'am. Hunk for Jesus, lose your soul. No, 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 don't lose your soul. <laughs> save your soul. Save your soul. <laughs> Hunk for Jesus, save your soul. Hunk, yes, man. Hunk, hunk for Jesus, save your soul. Yeah. Oh, okay. Pastor Stewart, I, I mean, Pastor Stewart, I really, really thank God for you guys because I was, I just tuned in and listened to you all last Friday and I just get off work and excited to get into the inspiration and in life too, you know, because I learned so much. You know, I thank God for you guys. Yeah. Continue being about Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So yeah, man, that that that's that's something. We have another caller. Let's let's do it real quickly. Caller, you're on the line. Who are we speaking with? How you doing? Hey there. Are you still there? She's still there. Okay, good, 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 good. So tell us how important is integrity for us as Christians? It's very important for me. Uh, I feel like it goes hand in hand with transparency. I put it in the comments, but I'll say it again for everybody that's listening. Um, pastor by the name of Pastor Jarvis Wash in Florida, he reconnected uh, my faith in God, but he did it by being transparent. When I first went to uh, one of his sermons, he was like, hey, listen, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm human. I used to sell drugs. I used to be in the streets. I got more felonies on my record than I can count. But it was that transparency that really got me back into being connected with Christ. And that's been over 10 years ago. And I really believe if it wasn't for that conversation, I wouldn't be where I am with Christ. It was really a lot that I was going through. And people would tell me, you know, Pastor Watch did this and Pastor Watch did that. And I had no idea, but that was his integrity. He was doing the right thing when I wasn't looking. And it it really got me reconnected with the church and with Christ and with people that are in leadership. It it really helped me a lot. I wouldn't be where I am in Christ without that man, period. Absolutely. Yeah, that's major. It is. And, And I think that's, that's what a lot of our generation needs um, mm-hmm. because the church has not been open, not been transparent, not had the conversations that we promised to have on straight church. <laughs> yeah. And that we will have no chaser on straight church. No chaser. Listen, we have to uh, get some commercials in and then we're going to see you all on the other side of the commercial break so we can wrap up uh-huh. the second episode. You going to do it this time? Us do what? Yeah, to be. No, man, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> so keep it locked. This is praise. Y'all pray for me. Pray for me. <laughs> this is straight church. No, no chaser. <laughs> Thank you so much for the callers. 
Look, for real, for real. For real, for real. For real. Um, integrity matters and means so much. Um, as we're in the space, I know, Trey, of training our parishioners and training up preachers and training up deacons, I know it's one of the first things we talk about. Yep. Because integrity is like credit. <laughs> Your integrity has a lot to do with your reputation. Wow. Your integrity is synonymous. Your reputation is synonymous with credit. It takes a long time to build it. It takes no time to tear it down. Yeah, man. So whatever you do, family, make sure that you live a life of integrity. If people can't trust you, ain't nobody going to fool with you. <laughs> That's just in life, period. <laughs> just in life, I don't care who you is. <laughs> I don't care who you is, man. At the end of the day, we as pastors just have to remember for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Oh, he's preaching in the comments. <laughs> Dr. Antoine Evans, you preaching in the comments. You didn't pull the whole text out. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God. <laughs> yeah, we, we just have to make sure, family, that we are integral people <clears throat> that we make sure that we we live a life of integrity now now trey there's something else we want to go into um there's something else we want to go into what what you think about <sighs> bro I, I think it was we already talked about the shady saints and the messy members but we didn't really deal with the shady stuff. You want to deal? Well, we only got we how much really. time we got. That's what I'm saying. We ran out of time. We I have, see you, Sister Elizabeth Williams. We, we may have to talk to Terry so can we extend it an extra hour. Well, um. you know, <laughs> if, if the saints will talk back, then maybe we'll go there. We, we may have to work on extending it. Sister, but, Sister Williams said, so what's your integrity score? <laughs> Ooh. 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 <laughs> Ooh. That's a good title for a Friday for Phil, man. <laughs> What's your integrity score? I love it. <laughs> well, we got to get on our pastoral soapbox. I think we need to clean it up. Okay. We got we got to do our candy spirituals. <laughs> got to clean up. Uh, but we messed up. <laughs> Lord, started my life over again. Oh, Lord, clean up. Oh, we about to be back on. Look, ooh, Lord. You know them country folk, they do the same run. That's how you know I was a PK in the country church on the drum singing. It get good to them, though. Ooh, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we back. Montgomery's Inspiration Station, Praise 96.5 FM, WMGY. Yeah. You're still listening to yours true, the Crown Prince, Pastor Trey. Pastor Lee B. This is Straight Church. No chaser. Where we keep things real, uh -huh. relevant, uh -huh. and righteous. Absolutely. All day, every day. All day, every day. And if you've been hanging with us... The entirety of our show, our right. broadcast, we thank God for you. If you're just now tuning in, we want to catch you up to speed. We have been talking about this new movie called Hunk for Jesus. Hunk for Jesus. Save your soul. Uh-huh. And uh, Pastor Lee told us that the movie mm -hmm. is a satire film. It's a satire film, man. And yeah. for those of you who don't know what a satire film is, tell them real quickly. Just You don't remember Hey man, this is your job. Oh, okay. My all job. Right. All right, all let right. me help you, man. I'm, I'm the assist man. I throw the ball up. Your I'm job is you. the That's it. My knees are sore. Hey man, well, you better get some ice on them knees or something. Because <laughs> this time, when it's showtime, it's icy hot time. Right? <laughs> hey, look, family. So, a satire film is a film within the genre that gives you, or rather, it's just a category of films that gives you the ability to have a different insight or perspective on other things, whether it be controversial, political topics, religious topics, or anything that happens socially. So the reality is, family, the movie did its job. Mm. It did its job very well. And shout out to the great actors who were in the movie, the two main actors that made it all happen for us. Uh, my brother, was it Sterling K.? Brown. Brown. Yes. He was Pastor Lee Curtis Childs. 
and first lady trinity childs is sister regina hall there's a lot of people calling for them to get oscars i think we should support them one way or the other Man. because Man. simply they did a great job absolutely yeah they did a so great job. Let, let's get to the pastor's soapbox we are my soapbox today and, and you were singing you want to sing the song you want me to, i turn to music as so you can sing the song what was the song you know what the candy spirituals was saying oh singing. oh let go pass the soap, soapbox what, what was it what was it oh, oh i found it here it is got to clean up Mm, but I messed up. Mm, started my life over again. Yeah, mm. you know. <laughs> Doc, let's talk about. Let's it. get to it, man. What's on your mind? Tell us. Tell us what's on your mind. What's on your heart? Well, the first thing we wanted to make sure that we further emphasize is that the integrity of a preacher is necessary. We talked about it off the air that your integrity is likened unto your reputation, which both team up to literally be your credit as a preacher, as a witness, as a testimony for God and for the sake of his kingdom. We had a sister online who asked the question, if that be the case, Pastor, so what is your integrity score? And I think that's the question we ought to ask you. What is your integrity score? To what degree can you be who you say you be? To Man. what degree can you be, listen, Facebook, Twitter, folk, who you supposed to be? Mm. And here it is that when we find out that we can do the same thing when no one's looking, do the right thing when no one's looking, do the right thing when someone's looking, that we have a great integrity score. Our integrity means the world. It's like credit. It takes a while to build and it takes no time to lose it. Man, can you be trusted? What's in your wallet? <laughs> <laughs> we on the soapbox tray. I, I think there was something else we wanted to talk about. We wanted to talk about how you are a person before a pastor. Man, give it to us. That's major. I think it's very important for us to understand, especially all of the preachers. Uh -huh. You have to be sure mm -hmm. that you do not lose yourself Get the deal. in what God has graced and or called you to do. Always remember that God. Yeah. is responsible mm -hmm. for putting you in the position that you are in. Wow. Never forget that if it had not been for God, Reverend, you would not be where you are. Uh, so never lose sight of that. And understand with that being understood, right? God does not ever require you yeah. to not be human. I like it. God at all times expects for you to be who and what he has created you to be which is a human. Right. And to that end, pastors, please make sure you find balance in your life. Take some time to unwind. Wow. Take some time to de-stress. Yeah. Take some time to chill. Yeah. Take some time to go out of town. Die. If you got a family, man, take your wife out. Just find any day during the week. All Say, right. babe, get dressed. Hold We're on. going dim tonight. See, now you finna mess up somebody. <laughs> I'm trying to help. I ain't got money for I'm them. trying to help. See, you finna It don't have to be expensive. Don't do it. Now, now don't say that. Because if he go buy her some McDonald's <laughs> and she get mad, they blaming you. Hey, well, I'm speaking from <laughs> the fact that if love is what love does. Oh, okay. All right. Then just the simple thought mm -hmm. and the simple fact that your husband just cleared his entire schedule out. Just to spend an evening with you, I think most ladies will go for it. Especially if they're used to their husbands always being on the go. I think they'd be cool with it. Amen. Pray God. Amen. Pray God. <laughs> you stupid. Now, now, I think there was another thing we had. We wanted to really talk about the fact that Pastor Charles got rid of his deacons. Pastors, I just want to urge and encourage you to make sure that wherever you are in a place of leadership, that you allow there to be someone and or something that can always be a check and balance for you. It's easy for the enemy to come at us and make us feel like we can do it all on our, on our own, that we can do it by ourselves, that we don't need nobody. We don't need what folk have to say. We don't need uh, any type of help, but please don't get beside yourself. You need help. You need help. You need checks and balances because we don't know it all. And my dad said, if you think you know it all, you know nothing at all. <laughs> You need somebody you can lean on. Lean on. Lean on me. We got one more though, Trey, on the soapbox before we get down. Members are not yours. They're the Lord's. Can I hear your take? <laughs> it's important for us to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that, especially those of us as pastors, mm -hmm. that the people who are in our charge, mm -hmm. 
they are in our charge because God is entrusting us. God has charged us to shepherd his flock. Yeah. And a shepherd is someone who cares for the sheep. Right. Who does what he can to provide for the sheep. Wow. So, and who's willing. Yeah. To go above and beyond. Yeah. To ensure the safety and the well-being of that sheep. Absolutely. And, and there's a semantic technicality there. The reality that if we're shepherding his sheep, mm -hmm. then he's probably really the shepherd and we're the under shepherd. So all we do is oversee that which God has allowed us to oversee, which gives us stewardship and not ownership. Because the reality is that they are our sheep and our people by stewardship. Yeah. Not ownership. Not ownership. So that means ain't nobody still in your members. This uh, is one body of Christ. You just had to go there. I had to. I yeah, had you just you just couldn't leave it alone. No, well, you know, I they, mean, we made it through the show. Well, and you just could not let the show go by you know, without saying that. You know, it was on the movie. I thought we were not going there today. <laughs> ain't nobody still in your members. They're still in the body of Christ. We are co-workers. We are all serving and doing the task that was given to us by the same boss. I'm just doing the fact that you just had to go there. Well, you know, I just had to say what I had to say. I was on my soapbox. Do I need to get down? Yes. Okay. Just just come on down. Because if you don't come down now, I may not ever be able to get you down. Sunday morning to come and the members of New Home be, where's past that? Still on the soapbox. Well, no. <laughs> See, Nibi Walker Jr. going to be in place, but this past for Nibi. <laughs> <laughs> you coming down for Sunday morning. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Again, listen, we have to get ready to go, but we do want to thank God for all of you listening uh, to us and journeying with us this afternoon. Pray God, pray God. This has been an incredible, incredible second episode yes. of Straight Church No Chase. Before we wrap up, Pastor Lee, is there anything else you would like to share with the people before we close it out? Hey, there's one thing that I've learned in life. It's the fact that when we tell others about something, they're more susceptible to tune into it. Mm. So I want to admonish and beseech each and every one of you to tell someone they need to tune in on Fridays from the hour 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. to Straight Church No Chaser with they boy, the crown prince. So <laughs> praise. And that is 6.5. Trey Stewart. Pastor Trey. And they boy, Pastor Lee B. You got to do your neck like that? I did because I couldn't get the ray. They can see me on Facebook. They can see I know. Me I'm just saying. I just had to get it out. WG. <laughs> this man. This man. Y'all pray for me. Pray. Pray for me. Sing it out. Sing it out. Yes, sir. Listen. I'm excited about next week, though. Next week's going to be bonkers. It, it's going to be. If you think today's show was something, right? next week is going to be absolutely amazing. And, and, and we want to tell you that you have the opportunity to be a part of what our discussions are to be. And if you've already sent some topics, we will deal with them. They are coming soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, again, thank each and every one of you. We've enjoyed you on this Friday afternoon. That's it. This is it for Straight Church. No chaser. With Pastor Trey. And Pastor Lee B. We'll see you all next week. Peace out, fam. <laughs> Family, we've enjoyed you. We're so grateful that you stick, stuck with us through our issues on the broadcast. It's our prayer that you tune in next Friday. That you be a part of the conversation. Whatever it is you got to add, we believe that it's going to be a blessing to us and a blessing for us. Trey, can you say bye to my people? Before we say bye, can y'all pray for me? I, I, this man, this man over here. This man over here. Y'all see how he be acting? Y'all see? Y'all see? No, nah, but for real though, like, listen, we, see, we totally and thoroughly enjoy all of y'all. The conversation has been phenomenal. Don't forget to go check out Hunk for Jesus, Save Your Soul. If you have not seen it, make sure you go and watch it. So when we come back next week, you can tell us what you think about it. Again, we love you all. Don't forget to share and like. And if you want to sponsor Straight Church No Chaser, hit us up.
All right. What's, what's make the email? Sure you hit us email. Up. Make sure you hit us up. The email is straight church, no chaser one at gmail.com. It's at the bottom of the screen. There it is. Hit us up if you have a business and you want to sponsor this awesome broadcast. Make sure you do so. Absolutely. I love you all. Make sure you follow us on our on our social medias. Uh shouts out Facebook. restoration. Instagram, what are we doing? Shouts out restoration. New home Shouts out restoration. Peace out, family. We'll see y'all. Hey. <laughs> well, he, it's worth it. It's worth it.